What's up guys? This is going to be the general gameplay video for my Explosive Arrow build. If you want to see some gameplay, I will be showing a little bit in the beginning. Then later on we're going to move on to how Explosive Arrow works in general. The skill tree, then the links, and then the gear priority, all that kind of stuff, the jewels, and yeah. What do you need to actually properly gear, gear the character and what are your best in slots. And then I guess I'll talk about the bandits a little bit. Although, if you want general tricks and, trips on the <laughs> tricks and tips on this build, I highly recommend you check out my other video on my YouTube which talks a lot about that kind of stuff, right? So if something's confusing to you, it is a FAQ video and most likely your question is answered there or it's answered somewhere in this video. So let's go. For like general gameplay, this is an old necropolis. This is a legacy map because I just don't have anything better on standard but it is still a 75. I'll show you some general gameplay. Basically want to stick like one arrow in and then move on the blue packs maybe it's a little bit more uh, it's very important that you utilize your frenzy uh, to keep your life at full you can see that even if I drop a little bit of life here right stuff's getting me I just use my frenzy and heals you up perfectly fine like almost instantly so yeah that's generally it try and move as fast as possible through the map use the walls to hit mobs is very very important don't overuse your frenzy don't underuse it because you're gonna die and just be quick it's very fun gameplay it's very swift feels very smooth uh, I thought maybe in the beginning before playing this build uh, that the explosion is gonna make it a little bit awkward right because you have to wait for the explosion and really even with this kind of movement speed it's completely fine and you don't have to worry about it because you can always see the mobs off screen so there is no issue whatsoever right all right so that's like general stuff i will be posting some videos with like full clears and stuff like that this character is level 91 so keep that in mind uh when i ended up dying on the ladder i've only been playing for about 40 days and i made it into the top 50 uh, for about four days i don't know what i said and I made it into the top 50, so it actually worked out pretty great. Let me just remove this golem, because he's kind of annoying. And yeah, let's move on to how to scale this, and what you exactly you need for the build. So, I'm using a 21 explosive arrow. The way you scale explosive arrow is through fire, area damage, or projectile. Just Or projectile damage. Just make sure that it's proje non-attack projectile damage, right? Cause, so that doesn't work. Because if you use like uh, iron grip or point blank, it's attack projectile damage and that does not work. The same reason why we use a cool rain, and as you can see a cool rain has 50% less weapon damage. We don't use the weapon damage, it's a separate type of damage treated as if it were a spell. right? So if you look at the tags, you can see that there's no projectile damage. I guarantee projectile damage does scale it, and you can see that it's attack. Attack damage only scales the initial hit, not the actual explosion, so we don't worry about that. Um, Alright, so let's move on to the skill tree. I'll talk a little bit about the skill tree and the stuff that I've selected, and then I'll talk about how to level the build and all that kind of nice stuff. So the skill tree went through a couple changes in the past. I've got I went into like blast radius and heart of flame. I was thinking about getting double curse and all that, but I realized that the build has a lot of problems with reflect. Like no kidding, <laughs> a lot of problems with reflect. So we have to go to the shadow. We have to pick up vault pack and we have to use a life leech gem. It is necessary. The way you substitute the loss of AoE is strictly through attack speed. I did not think attack speed is so amazing on this build. It is probably your best stat. Honestly, you're always going to be doing enough damage and the only limitation of the build is the AoE, so to say, and the amount of fuses you can, you can throw out. Uh, so attack speed is just amazing. It's super, super, super good. So, going through the shadow is not that painful because we do gain access to hard killer, we gain an easy jewel, you know, these are extremely efficient. Coordination is 12 attack speed and dexterity, which helps with the build, and then trickery is 20% elemental damage. I mean, what more do you want? And also intelligence, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, you do have to start off with Scion because of the awkward pathing. If you don't, then you don't have 
access to the area nodes you don't have uh, you would have to travel through like reflexes and stuff which is very bad for the build in my opinion and yeah just make sure that you start off with scion i don't recommend playing this on any other class but you can if you don't care about your character being min max okay we travel through the projectile nodes we get into constitution another easy jewel slot you can see that we pick up Unrelenting, which helps out a little bit with the mana cost, but Frenzy covers all of that. Like I said in the past, Frenzy is incredibly important in this build. Uh, and yeah, Blood Magic, a lot of life, more jewels. We make sure to get Resolute Technique because we don't want to worry about... Uh, well, critting is not that big of a deal, but we don't want to worry about uh, accuracy, right? You don't want to get it on gear which I'm gonna explain in a little bit. So more life, more life, more life, more life. Obviously amplify with AOE. Explosive impact is efficient even though it's two travel points. It is efficient because it's 25 fire and four AOE. It's worth it. And then celestial judgment. You can pick up celestial punishment, but it's not that good because you only get the initial hit off. So yeah. You see that we don't get a lot of a lot of damage. However, we do gain, we do have access to like elemental damage over here and you know, arsonist and more damage over here. Uh, sniper you can get, blaze you can get. So if you're playing a softcore build, you can go for those nodes as opposite to maybe bloodless and unrelenting and the life nodes that you generally get if you want to play a little bit more YOLO, but that's completely up to you. For leveling, I highly recommend just traveling through the projectile nodes, getting into the Templar, picking up Celestial, uh, Celestial Judgment, an Elemental List. You should be using a Flame Totem, some sort of fire skill like an Incinerate. This is completely up to you. Honestly, the build level is so fast, it doesn't really matter. Um, I, I personally use Firestorm Traps and Flame Totem along with Incinerate and Flame Blast for single target, right? So... At level 28, you gain access to using Explosive Arrow, but you shouldn't be using it at a, at 28 in my opinion. You can if you've got a cool rain, but it's a little bit weak. I opted in, like I, I highly recommend using Explosive Arrow at 38. Just make sure that you level it from 28 to 38 because it only scales with the levels of the Explosive Arrow. But I highly recommend it because at 38 you get GMP and you also get increased AoE which helps out with clear speed so freaking much you have no idea. <laughs> it is incredibly important. And yeah, I, like I said before, I recommend using a cool rain but if you can't then try and get a fast plus one uh, to bow skills bow or something. And that still should work good enough but a cool rain is obviously better. So just keep that in mind. I think that's about it for the leveling. Oh yeah, and I'll talk about the bandits maybe. For bandits, you want to help Oak in normal, then in Cruel, it's kind of up to you. There is some in maxing involved, but in general, you want to help Creighton. But if you know that you won't get to the higher levels, maybe you want to take the skill point just to have a little bit more room with what exactly you want to spec into with that one additional skill point. And the same thing applies for Merciless. 99% of the people out there, in my opinion, should be getting the Frenzy Charge because it's attack speed and more damage. What more do you want? But to some of you out there, for a little bit more room to work things out, you might want to take the skill point. That is just entirely up to you. Okay, so let's go with the links. You can see that I'm using a 6 link, but it was a mistake from my part. I don't recommend using a 6 link. I mean, I <laughs> obviously I recommend using a 6 link, but I don't recommend focusing on getting a 6 link like I did because the slower projectiles literally made no difference. I didn't even notice it. I am using it because I got it, but uh, it's not a big deal. You should be focusing on other gear pieces, like for instance, getting a Combs Heart, which I'm going to talk about later. All right. But you can see our links are Explosive Arrow, Greater Multiple Projectiles, Increased AoE, Fire Pen, and Life Leech. And then our 6th link is most likely Sword Projectiles, right? Uh, nothing really much to talk about. For a 4 link, you might want to use Explosive Arrow, GMP, Increased AoE, and then Fire Pen. And if you feel like you're, try you're having problems with Reflect, then use a Life Leech. But you really shouldn't have problems with Reflect until you have the five link right because i until like 
the level 80s I didn't really have problems with Reflect. When I started getting into the higher maps I noticed that uh, Thorn Flesh was... Yeah, a little bit much. Even the single the single target mobs, the the rares, they were problematic with Reflect, so that's why I opted in for going to Vault Pact. So that's our AoE setup. This is primarily what we use for AoE clearing. For single target, we use the slower projectiles, fire pen, conch effect, and explosive arrow. Um, you can see that I also use a life leech, but this is only because my links are messed up. I recommend using a chance to ignite instead. You can stick in like one or two fuses into the mob and as long as it ignites, it's gonna die pretty much 100% of the time. The ignite is incredibly strong when this build, but yeah, I had to get a life leech because I can't get the chance to ignite, which is kind of painful. The Also, another thing, the way Explosive Arrow works is it snapshots the damage with the one fuse. So if you stick one fuse into a rare mob, right and then you use the AoE this mob will still get keep getting stacked with the single target even though you're using this but the mob surrounding will also have arrows in them so it's gonna result in a much bigger explosion so just keep that in mind you can snapshot the damage with this or you can just you know if it's a single mob with five five of them in there and he's gonna die pretty much 100% of the time uh, we use a separate flammability. This is great for increases in damage. You shouldn't be using this too often. Uh, outside of rares, maybe when you've got the delay between the explosion, you know, you can use uh, a curse just before the explosion so that it, that boosts up the damage mm, and the potential ignite and gives you more chance to ignite, right? But you shouldn't be using this too often. You should be focusing on either using explosive arrow or frenzy for survivability. Uh, our next setup is Volhaze, Volhaze, Blink Arrow and Increase Duration. The Blink Arrow is incredibly important for the build. You can see that it gives us a lot of movement. Uh, you should be using this a lot. I mean, it's kind of difficult, it can be kind of sketchy, so you have to be smart with it. But if you used right, it gives you incredible clear speed. So just keep that in mind and try and use it every single cooldown. Double Volhaze setup with an increased duration, that's the reason why we use increased duration for these things. I mean, what more can I say? Volhaze is just like the best Vol skill ever. Unless your build just uses a Vol skill, you should have this, like always. We use double because it's just easier to keep the charges going. Um, that's typically what I go for, double Vol skills. And it's amazing. I you have to use it. <laughs> I mean, there's no escape. We use a Castman damage taken setup. We use Enfeeble, Summon Flame Goal, and Molten Shell. This is kind of personal preference. Some people might want to use Arctic Breath. Some people might want to use Temp Chains instead of Enfeeble. Some people might not want to use a Flame Golem instead of using like a Immortal Call or something. This is completely up to you. I'm lazy, so I use a Flame Golem. Uh, I use a Molten Shell, it is very cool, you can maybe use a Molten Shell with Life Leech for instance, so if you're taking massive amounts of damage, we do deal fire damage, so this Molten Shell actually blows up for a lot of damage. So if this blows up, it heals us up, very very cool setup, I don't use that because I like Frenzy a lot, and I use that a lot. Uh, and then Enfeeble is just amazing for uh, increasing your survivability, right? But like I said, this is kind of up to you. Uh, life gain on hit, frenzy, chain, greater multi -proje multiple projectiles. I can't stress this enough. This is so important for your survivability. Use this as much as possible. Between every, like when you're waiting for fuses and you can't do anything, you can't move because you're stuck between mobs. I don't know, your blink arrows on cooldown. Use frenzy. Try and get the life back. Always have frenzy charges, right? Uh, frenzy. Uh, yeah, Frenzy Charge is running. Very, very, very important. Don't forget about this, because in the beginning I didn't appreciate this enough, but it is truly amazing. For Flasks, you should be using Divines. You can see that I'm using Holodes because I was just messing around with the build a lot, so that is kind of a mistake. You should be using Holodes and for the most part healing up with Frenzy, and when, you know, panic stuff is happening, just smash your pots. Divines do heal for more, so that's what I recommend for the build. I do play very like uh, 
piano keyboard or whatever where I constantly go one two three because that just helps me out with survivability in general. But yeah, for this build that doesn't apply too much. You can use a ruby flask instead of one of the health pots. I didn't find it too useful, but you can. It's up to you. Personal preference again. Uh, granite is not a personal preference. Get a granite flask. You can see that we get 11k armor with just a granite, which is amazing. With a molten shell pop, it's like 13 or 14k. Very, very helpful. Uh, physical damage is so scary right now, you literally have to use this. Or maybe you can use a Rumi if you want, I think that would work. Oh, better. <laughs> a Rumi is pretty amazing. And then Ample, Quicksilver of Warding. The Ample doesn't really matter too much, you can use whatever, you can use uh, Charge Recovery. But the having a warding flask is incredibly important. You can see that I have overcap resist, so even running an elemental weakness map is easy peasy. But uh, I still recommend you use a warding just in case. You know, anything can happen. What if you get double cursed or something? Ooh, that's crazy. But yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to this, and we can move on to talking about the actual gear and gear priorities and what are your best in slots and stuff like that. So our best in slot for our weapon is a cool rain, in my opinion. You can use a weapon swap plus two or plus three bow if you feel like your single target damage is lacking, or if you have a comb's heart, then you have to drop the five link setup on your chest piece, and that's what you need to go with. But for the most part, Cool Rain is amazing. That's what I prefer. Devoter's Devotion is kind of a tricky one. I started using this kind of light. Uh, biggest benefits of this is uh, the dexterity helps us out a lot, but it's not that big of a deal. The attack speed is amazing. Like I said in the past, attack speed is just so important for this build. It does give us quite a bit of armor and evasion. We don't really care for the evasion, but armor is helpful. You can get a better helmet defensively, but uh, as I'm going to talk in a second, it's yeah, it's not a good giveaway. Uh, chaos resistance. I mean, what more do you need? Chaos is amazing, and then movement speed is like the best thing ever. Like I've said in the past, the build clears amazingly fast, primarily because it just has so much mobility. Very, very, very very good stuff. You can use a defensive helmet, something with just a lot of life, because we do prioritize life on just about every gear piece. But that would only give me 500 life, in my opinion, the trade-off is better, and it's in favor of the Devoter's Devotion. However, in the past, I mean, I, ch I changed to the Devoter's Devotion very late. I, I was using just a random helmet with life, but this is this is what I recommend for your endgame build. And then, I mean, the rest of the gear is pretty much pretty much always the same. We sh if you can get a Combs Heart, use a Combs Heart. If you can't, get life, uh, resist, strength for more, li more life. Try and get as much Chaos Resistance as possible. Try and get armor. And that's pretty much it. You can see all of these things were bought for about, you know, 2, 3, maybe 4 chaos at most in the beginning of a league. So even in the beginning of a league, these things are incredibly cheap because people don't really play builds like these. You can get attack speed on pieces like everywhere you want, pretty much. But like I said, very, very budget gear for me right now. So I don't have attack speed on anything and you can see that the build still works out great. The quiver is also kind of tricky because it's going to be very, very cheap for you to get pieces like this. This is a quiver that's literally worth maybe two chaos. Uh, they're incredibly cheap because nobody uses them other than like poison, poison arrow characters and explosive arrow characters. Corrupt these. Corrupt as many as possible and try and get a plus one arrow. I wasn't lucky enough. I corrupted a couple. I didn't get it. But if you can get a plus one arrow, that's a huge clear speed increase. Uh, or if you can get a, if you can get life leech, uh, or fire, fire leech, I think it's called. That's very helpful as well with reflect. And really, that's about it for the tricky part. You can see we get 600 strength that helps us out a lot with life, and just get a lot of life on your stuff. Try and overcap your resists. In my opinion. This build can run just about every single map mod. The only thing that's kind of tricky is Reflect, but with a Ruby Flask and if you take your time, 
uh, you can run those pretty eff effectively as well. Um, which is why I'm probably in the future I'm probably gonna play this build in a race scenario because I was just so baffled by how good it was. Very very fun for movement speed uh, for uh, boots you want movement speed. Very important. Try and get 25 or 30 like I talked about in the past. The devotee's devotion. I keep saying I in the past again and all this stuff, but I can't stress this stuff enough. Movement speed is just so huge. So try and get as much movement speed as possible. Uh, on my ring, you can see that I have intelligence. Uh, that's kind of a problem. Try and get all attributes. I don't have all attributes on any pieces of my gear, but if you can get all attributes, that helps with dexterity, that helps with the int, and it gives us more life. I mean, what more do you want? It's pretty amazing. And there, items like these are typically very cheap. All right. Uh, so yeah, movement speed, I need a little bit of dex, that's why I have dex on my boots, but all attributes would have fixed that, and yeah, that's about it. Oh, for our forward link single target, uh, just get rid of the f uh, slower projectiles, uh, and then instead of the life leech, use a chance to ignite. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, you can see, this was with a 21 explosive arrow, but... The damage really doesn't make a difference. The biggest difference maker is the AoE. You're pretty much always going to have enough damage. Oh, yeah, for our jewels. That's another thing. Jewels. That's new for me, so let's talk about these. Uh, get life. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Get life, get projectile damage, get attack speed. Attack speed and life is your best bet because you don't need the damage. But we get a lot of jewels. Make sure to get as best as possible. These are only worth, like... 2-3 chaos each, um, but they help with the build a lot, the percent life is amazing, and yeah. I think the priority is life, attack speed, fire damage, and then the rest really doesn't make a difference, that's what you should go for. The projectile damage or area damage, that's completely up to you. But yeah, that's pretty much it, there should be a written guide down in the description below if you want to check that out if you missed anything in the video or if I didn't mention anything it is down there links to the other videos should be there somewhere around the video or in this description below or if you're watching on a playlist it's just gonna pop up automatically I highly recommend this build I had a ton of fun with it uh, there are many different explosive arrow builds most of them pretty similar but I've never played it before and yeah, I just, I just really, I just really like this one. Uh, like I said in the past, I will be playing it in a competitive scenario, most likely, unless I find something even more fun. But for now, that is the plan. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry about the really long video, but I just wanted to answer every single question that you could have possibly posted. But you're probably still gonna surprise me with something. But yeah, thank you very much. Hope to see you guys in the next one, and bye bye.